world of work is changing daily, and Andrew May and Paul Mitzi ask business owners one question, coffee or Corona, and then let the conversations and beverages flow. This time, Andrew heads down Victoria's surf coast to the seaside town of Anglesey to meet renowned voice artist Andrew Peters. Hang on, that's me. Hey, how are you? Good, mate. Coffee or Corona? It is 9am. What do you do, Andrew? When someone asks me, what do you do? I say voiceovers and they say, what? What sort of jobs are your um, main jobs? Well, the main ones are Singapore, Channel News Asia, or CNA as it's called now. Premier's Tuesday. Dubai Eye in Dubai. Your daily appointment for news, business updates. They're my two major clients. Then I do all sorts of other things. Are you learning for Etihad Airways and, and provide corporate narrations for various people, including yourself? Oh, yes, for me. <laughs> so you can dub my voice. Oh, you. Yes, of course. I'm Andrew May. That's nice. very good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your story. What's your background and everything? How far back do you want to go? <laughs> oh, 1852. 1852. Yes, 1940s, Andrew was born. <laughs> no, 50s? 1950s, yes, indeed. I, I was, grew up in England, went to school in England. Left when I was 16. Two weeks after I left school, actually, I was on a ship setting sail for Australia. When I was a kid, or a teenager, I used to listen to a lot of music. Yeah. And um, I had my record player and stuff, and I used to pretend I was a DJ, which was... You used to of, pretend you are a DJ? I used to Did pretend. you do that when you were an actual DJ? Yes. And uh, what stations did you work for? The uh, first one I worked was in Victoria, in Swan Hill, 3SH. Then I went to Wyala. And uh, worked a five A year. FM radio opened in nineteen eighty. Yeah, and I heard it and went, "That's it." Like, that that suits your voice. Yeah, it did. Luckily, one guy left uh, the station, which was SAFM. Uh, he left, and they contacted me and offered me the gig. Now, with your voice, did you have a naturally deep voice? Did you train it? I ended up with my dad's voice, but I had the a completely bizarre accent. Yeah, because I have a secret um, nickname for you. Oh. Captain Testicles. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nothing personal. Just that's what I call... This is an above-waist shot, isn't it? You, no, you... we'll get a close-up later. <laughs> of what? <laughs> Captain Testicles. Yes. When, uh, when did you come up with that one? Years ago. I think I said it to, to one of our colleagues as a joke once, and they knew who I meant. <laughs> um, <and> it... <laughs> that's really funny. Let's go forward a few years. You uh, started doing television. I did television in the 80s at the ABC, hosting Rock Arena. And everyone's forgotten about me hosting Rock Arena. And what about Night Moves? No, no, that was Lee Simon. Oh. And we used to get confused. People used to think we're the same guy. Well, I, I'm, I owe the same thing. I get mistaken for Joe Pesci. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Paul. Paul's on the phone. I, I'm sorry, I gave Paul... No, just... I gave Paul your number. Is that Lee Simon? Is that Donny Sutherland? Well, Donny's much older and Lee's Greek. Molly Melton. From radio to TV presenting. Both did... at the same time, actually. Yeah, so then I went to Channel 10, and I did a couple of TV shows there, in fact, two a week. They were great days, and I met some really interesting people. And after that, I moved towards voiceover, full-time. I met you back in uh, Channel 7 days at Dancing with the Stars. You were going driving from studio to studio in Melbourne doing voiceovers. Yep. And then what happened with the home recording? I first started doing that because I had one client who was on the other side of Melbourne. Mm -hmm. We either did a weekly session, which rarely happened, because he wanted to do daily stuff. And we were doing like these 10-second reads. And I said to him, look, it, wouldn't it be easier and save me driving over to do like two 10-second reads if I just record at home and send it to you? That was the beginning of it. Well, I remember Dancing with the Stars. You used to sometimes do the promos in the morning before the live telecast. So you'd be at home going, yes, yeah, coming up. I can't yeah, do yeah, yeah. I can't do Captain yeah. Testicle very well. But, uh, <laughs> but it's like, testicle. and you'd send it off from home. And I thought, yeah. oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you start off with basic equipment or what happened? You built it up? Well, the first one, it was really basic because I had no idea what I was doing. So that was in a, basically a cupboard. Um, then when I moved out of town up into Eltham, I had uh, I decided I was going to make a bigger studio, so I got a mate, Neil McGrath. Neil McGrath, if you're watching, um, he came over and helped me set up a, a proper studio. So I built one in an outside building. And now you're in a, what you call Point Point Road Night. And uh, what's it like living here and working here? Fab. You were used to working from home. Yeah. Now COVID has hit. Has that been 
okay for you in terms of your work? What have you done differently? For me, it's like the same. The only difference is that I've had people calling me um, to uh, get some advice about setting up a way of recording at home, uh, which has been interesting. So and also some of the big commercial studios because um, they had to get out and they had to set up gear at home as well. So there's a handful of the studios in Melbourne that have been connecting with me because we both use a thing called Source Connect, mm -hmm. which is a connectivity between here and commercial studios so I can beam straight in. Well, I, so, I saw, yeah, you, you can like record a voiceover very quickly and get it straight to Singapore television. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did that while we were setting up today. Quick turn. Here he is. Here's Andrew. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's going off to <laughs> Singapore. It's, right it's Channel News Asia. It's Paul again. Is that Captain Testicles? Do you know Frank Walker from National Tiles? Frank Walker, he's not a voiceover talent. Oh, he's he great. Says yeah, Hello. <laughs> I'm going to call Goodbye. <laughs> like myself, you're a performer. You were, you were known for uh, hosting Rock Arena and other shows. I was on Channel 9. How would you like it, huh? having giant pencils shoved up my ass by Russell Gilbert dressed as a troll. Nice. And we've both had to uh, run our own businesses, so yep. to speak. Do you think uh, businesses need to uh, learn stuff now during this time? Um, even if paid work slows down, you've got to keep busy. I do a podcast called The Pro Audio Suite, which targets uh, voiceover people and people who work in audio. I think it's important to connect with people. Correct. And nowadays, that's what, you know, we're doing with this series. We're putting content out and talking to mates like you. Yeah, yeah, which is great. The, the thing is about working from home is, and I was talking to an American colleague, and he was saying the same thing. He said, look, it doesn't matter where you are, because no one needs to know where you are. As long as you can deliver the product, you could be anywhere. I mean, no one needs to know where I live anyway. The point about working from home. They do is, now. Point yeah, right yeah, that's right. No. <laughs> what do you see the future of voiceovers now? Oh God, there's there's a bit of doom and gloom on the horizon with AI. In other words, manufactured voices, you know, computer generated voices. Oh, I guess I've heard something. Terrible. Artificial intelligence kind of thing. I could do one for a lot. Well, of I heard one just recently, and it didn't sound that bad, which is a bit scary. But uh, won't people pick that on radio? I think it'll be used more for corporate stuff. Mm. I can see a market for it there because, the, you know, the thing about a voice is it's the nuances of, of a voice. Mm. You know, that's the that's the thing that sort of artificial intelligence can't get yet. So you've always got to be looking, always looking forward. Well, great to talk to you, mate. And to you too. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. If you want to participate or sponsor us, or both, Drop us a line. Coffee at maysproductions.com.au.